Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Yes, we're playing with another oscilloscope today. It's another trio. 15 megahertz dual trace CS1352. I don't know if it works or not <laughs> yet. So that's going to be fun. It is really cute. See my hand here? I mean, I can just almost cover the entire front with one hand. That is how tiny it is. So this, this CRT here is really, really tiny. So yeah, it's uh, super nice and very portable. The handle, you can't really lock it. There's a little springy kind of lock, so you can't put it like this and put it on the table, then it's definitely gonna, yeah. It is going to fall, I guess. This is not. Maybe it's. Maybe maybe this click lock was more hard when it was new. So it got all the basic features of a dual channel oscilloscope. So how is this? doing the two channels. Is this alternating or is this chop mode fixed? Because I don't see anything about that. And I didn't read the manual. Okay, so this is auto level. And what I see here is a little crack, but it looks like there is probably some glass in here behind the plastic. I don't dare to push this even harder because maybe the crack is going to go even worse. But if I look at a special angle like here, I can't see the crack at all. Maybe I can fix this. I think there's a way to unlock or remove this piece of plastic. And then I can pull this out and then probably clean up everything here. I'll see. Oh, charge. Oh shit, is there a battery in this one? Oh no, stuff with batteries always makes me nervous. Let's look at the back. <clears throat> yeah, maybe let's look at the back. I mean, let's look at the side first. So power entry is on the side. And then there's a battery connection here for 12 volts. So there's probably a power supply for 12 volts and then everything runs off 12 volts voltage is correct fuse and external trick and stuff so far that is okay so that means is the battery internal or external because there's actually something else that bothers my mind a little bit look at that two big bad batteries and they can actually be in here in the back and this unit is very very heavy so now I'm nervous let's open this and have a look okay so it's just heavy because it's heavy <laughs> so that is where the two six volt batteries that could be located so I think it's really a special kind of battery pack it says here what is that? For more information, refer to the instruction manual. Blah, 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 jumper wire and... Anyway, optional battery pack. But I mean, this is really a nice scope with batteries in here. Then you can carry it somewhere and uh, do all sorts of science. So... So this is going to be the first power up. I will now turn on mains and I think everything here is in more or less correct settings, right? 18 watts, really? That is not, oh yay! It's alive! But only 18, 19 watts, that is really Focus works perfectly fine. 
Let's, there's, it's really bright here, so let's and intensity is really good. A nice, super smooth feeling. I mean, that is great. It is a little bit, isn't it? Tilted. So I think that is this one. Where was it? There was a pot here in the back, right? No, that's not it. So let's try it. And yes, it really works. And the picture is super, super beautiful. Nice and sharp. Uh, brightness, focus, everything is just really, really good. Look at that. It is razor sharp, this picture. And different channels see I really like this with when you have um, oh yeah look at that <laughs> add works as two oh we can probably invert yes that is so nice so now I'm inverting channel two and then adding them look at that beautiful Depending on the level. Oh, of course we need to massage the buttons here a little bit. But you can make all sorts of pretty pictures this way. Oh, here we've got no signal. The more we get. And then that's... Put it up here. Yeah, that is a nice little scope. So let's try and test the frequency range of this uh, scope. They say 15 megahertz is the specification. So this is one kilohertz and I adjusted it for 100% using the variable. So let's crank up the speed. That was 10. So let's go to 100. That was easy. No attenuation, of course. And still a super beautiful picture here at 100 kilohertz. And let's crank up the. That was 1 megahertz. Okay, good. And that is the fastest time base uh, 500 na nanosecond uh, per division and now we need a little bit more brightness and that also affect focus just barely all right let's that, that was one megahertz let's go 10 and oops we need to modify the trigger a little bit that is 16 megahertz, or let's go for the minus 3 that is here. 19 megahertz, but of course you can't see anything like that. Oh yeah, we can do the pull. Oh, look at that. Oh, let's turn off the light here. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a 19 megahertz uh, signal, and we are a little bit below the 3 dB point. A little bit let's just go a little bit down I think about here so 18 megahertz so yeah this scope is still doing even better than it's specified let's look what is inside right Ooh, yeah look at that of course the pots you need to massage those a little bit and then <laughs> but then it's gonna be okay 
and we're in. <sighs> it was a little bit hot <laughs> to get in here, by the way. The way that I needed to hold it and pull the cover off at the same time, that was difficult. But anyway, yeah, I managed to, to do it. But what is that? This can't be right. Well, that should be fairly easy to fix. Maybe this nut is, yeah, loose. So this is the isolation to chassis. But okay, this is only 12 volts, so that should be okay. And that will be time-based and trigger and stuff up here. Let's look around here what we got. Ooh, trimmer capacitor with super low capacity to stuff. Or is it because this there's a hot resistor down there and they want to cool? And one little modification. And the PCBs stacked quite beautiful. What the heck is that? That is a shield kind of thingy wrapped around metal. That looks like very... Oh yeah, look at that! What kind of a crazy idea is that? This is probably from the high voltage supply. We got inside this little metal cage. Ooh, we also got a bottom inner chassis plate shielding plate here, but it is also touching some stuff here if I if I do this. So that is probably not the idea. And what exactly is that? So that's probably just a capacitor and some glue. That looks a little bit weird. I believe this unit was serviced. This is not handwriting, no. This is silk screen or some other kind of stamp technique to mark all the connectors. That is nice. That board is actually a dual layer, yeah? And that will be the input boards. Oh, maybe, you see? Somebody wrote some little notes here about what is what so that is nice if you want to service I think I want to remove that plate and have a look look at that ground connection just remove this one that was a really good good solid connection to this this is actually quite funny. Can you see the scratch marks here? It looks like somebody was in here a lot, a lot of times. So that means this scope was for service many, many times. And this ground clip was removed many, many times. What, more than 20 times. Look at all the lines here. The bottom plate here is covered with plastic and actually some additional tape where those connectors are just to create a little bit extra. Well, well, but we are in. So this, ooh, there's a screw missing. No, 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 oh no, that's me. That is my fault. <laughs> oh, what an idiot. That's, of course, the two screws. Ooh, this PCB is completely loose. That is not good. It's going to fall. So that would be the two input amplifiers and all the attenuators. And see, 
we got trimmer capacitors over each of the attenuator steps so they can optimize for speed. We got a little bit of fix this and fix that kind of just optimize performance or whatever it is. And there's actually plenty of space in here. Normally the the size of scopes is always a thing related to the length of the CRT. But look at here. There's plenty of space in the back. And that's of course the flashing amplifiers. But it's really beautifully made and it is in a really good condition. There's no ugly smell or anything here. It is really nice and uh, yeah, nice and clean. Oh, tons of transistors. Look at that. Definitely trying to keep those resistors cool by a good thermal design here. Yeah, but I'm going to fix this a little bit and maybe just clean a little bit of dirt here, but that is nothing compared to its age. It's probably from the 1980 around that. No, oh, I like that. But voltages written on the PCB. That is a good design style. So I don't need manual to figure out the power supply.